Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question four, which is a 30 mark question on statistics and data. So we're told that a familiar question among professional tennis players is if the speed of a tennis serve depends on the height of the player. So the height of 20 players and their average speed of their serves were recorded during a recent tournament and we're given the results in the table below. So parts A and B are worth a combined 10 marks and A wants us to plot the points from the table and then B wants us to draw in the line of best fit. So putting the points from the table on the grid should be easy enough. And then drawing in the line of best fit is just drawing in a line that has roughly half the points on one side and the other half on the other side. So let's plot the points first. So we'll start with 1.83, 210, and then 1.85, 217, and we'll continue on until all 20 points are plotted. So your points should look something like that and there's one just off the graph up there as 252 is not on the y-axis that we're given. So now we have to draw in our line of best fit and as I said it should have roughly 10 points on either side of the line. Now your line of best fit should look something like that pink line there. Not everyone's will look the exact same but it shouldn't be too different to that. So let's have a look at part C of the question and part C is worth 5 marks. So part C wants us to find the equation of the line of best fit. So let's go to our formula tables book on page 18 and look up the formula for the equation of a line. So the formula for the equation of a line is y minus y1 is equal to m times by x minus x1, with m being the slope and x1, y1 being a coordinate on the line. So let's go back to our graph now and let's see if we can find the slope and then a coordinate on the line. So we can say that the slope is equal to rise over run. So I'm going to pick two points on the line and then we're going to do rise over run. So I'm going to pick this point here and this point down here and let's see how much it rises by and how much it runs by. So obviously the rise is how much it goes up. So it's a rise from 217.5 to 230. So it's a rise from 217.5 up to 230, which is going to be 12.5. Then it's a run from 1.84 to 1.92, which is 0 0.08. So now let's put 12.5 over 0 0.08. That's equal to 156.25. So now all I need to do is pick a coordinate on the line. And I'm going to pick this yellow coordinate here that I already had marked. And that's the coordinate 1.92, 230. So my M is going to be 156.25. My X1 will be 1.92. And my Y1 will be 230. So then I'm going to get Y minus 230 is equal to 156.25 multiplied by X minus 1.92. So that's Y minus 230 is equal to 156.25X minus 300. So now adding 230 to both sides and we get y is equal to 156.25x minus 70. So then adding 230 to both sides we get y is equal to 156.25x minus 70. And that's the equation of our line of best fit. Now of course yours might be slightly different so don't worry if it is as long as it's not too different to that. So now we're going to have a look at part D of the question, and part D is also worth 5 marks. So this asks us to explain why in the context of this question, the y-intercept of the line of best fit is not valid. So let's have a look. So the y-intercept, when you have an equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c, the c is the y-intercept. So therefore, in our equation, y is equal to 156.25x minus 70, the minus 70 is the y-intercept. However, this is a minus value, and as you'll see on the x-axis, we're looking at height. So, obviously, you can't have a height of minus 70 meters. So, therefore, the y-intercept is negative, and height can only be a positive value. So, therefore, that is why it is not valid in the context of this question. So, now let's have a look at part E, and part E is also worth 5 marks. So, this wants us to calculate the correlation coefficient, giving our answer correct to four decimal places. So, to do this, we're going to use our calculator. So the first thing to do is click on menu and then 2 and then you're going to click on 2 again for y is equal to a plus bx 
and now we've put in all of our x values and their corresponding y values. And then once you have all 20 values in, always check to make sure that you have the right amount of values in, as it's very easy to miss one. So here I can see that the last value I've in is 1.98, and that's the 20th value. So that's my 20 x values, and now to put in the corresponding 20 y values. So go back to the top and now start again and put in your 20 values for speed. And once again, you should have 20 y values. Then once you have your 20 x values and the corresponding 20 y values, you can clear and then click option and then click three and then click option, then click three. And then we get our OR value of 0.6048, correct to four decimal places. So now let's have a look at part F and this asks us what the data suggests about the speed of the serve and the height of the server. So 0.6048 is close around the middle. So then we can see that there's a moderate slash mild positive as it's plus 0 0.0648. So there's a moderate to mild positive correlation between the height of the player and serving speed. So that's your answer for part F. Now let's have a look at part G, which is also worth five marks. And this wants us to find the standard deviation of the speed of the serves in kilometers per hour. So once again, we go to our calculator. This time we're going to clear and we're going to put the data in again. So you can click menu two. But this time there's only going to be one variable and that's just going to be the speed of the serve. So that's going to be one. And I know it says X, but we're going to put in our Y values. So we're going to put in our 20 Y values again. And once again, check to make sure that you have your 20 values in for the speed. So then click clear. So click option, then click down and make sure to click down so that you have these three options on the screen. So summation, variable and min slash max. So you should click two for variable and then click three for the sigma x as sigma stands for standard deviation. Then click equals to and we'll get our standard deviation of 10.9017205, which correct to three decimal places is 10.902. So the standard deviation is 10.902 kilometers per hour. So that's your answer for part G of the question, the final part of the question, and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.